Hello Flosstube. Today we have a different kind of video that I'm trying. I hope you'll enjoy it. Let me know what you think. Uh, if you do enjoy it, please like uh, this video. Please subscribe to the channel. Please share it on Instagram or Flosstube uh, with uh, wherever you find your stitchy friends if you think they might be interested too. What we have today is five non-traditional cross stitch finishes that I'm going to show you that you might be interested in trying. They are not as difficult as you might think. Some of them are incredibly easy. So by non-traditional, I guess I really mean not framed and not in a pillow. I'm also not showing you uh, Biscornu, for example, that has a very standard way of finishing. I'm showing you slightly different, slightly creative things that you might think, oh yeah, I could have a go at that with my cross stitch. These are mostly finishes that are suitable for small or very small projects, but you might also use some of them for slightly larger projects as well. So I'm starting off uh, with this little bird finish. This uh, chart was button up birdie. I think this might have been June. It was the Wren. Um, so these were charts that were very old charts I picked up in a charity shop. I stitched this one little birdie. I wanted something that had a natural sort of finish to it. So I, uh, as you can see, just um, frayed the edges of the linen that I'd stitched it on. There is some in, uh, interfacing behind the stitching. And I also uh, glued it through the interfacing to a piece of card. That was then attached to this wooden creation. All of these bits came from Hobbycraft, the big base, uh, wooden base that you can see, natural wood, and then all of these little pieces of natural wood as well. If you have somebody in your household uh, with a saw and access to some wood, I'm sure they could make this for you in seconds. It would be very easy. Uh, to do that, to just pick up a, a beautiful piece of wood, uh, slice it into little quarter inch, I think these mostly are, uh, shapes. They could probably do a more even job than this one, which makes the gluing a bit easier. Onto the main, uh, just glued with PVA, uh, the stitching onto the little bits, onto the backing, jobs are good in. I don't normally love gluing. You will see glue in one or two of these projects I'm going to show you. But for something like this, this little piece that I just wanted something a little bit different, like I say, I wanted to play up that natural theme. This seemed like a really good way of doing that. Um, it doesn't have a hanger on the back. You could certainly, uh, if you knew how to do things with drills and screwdrivers, do that. You could probably use a command strip or something like that. But where I display it, it just sits and leans against the wall on a shelf. So it doesn't need a hanger. So that's finish number one, the wood circle. Finish number two, this is also a really nice, easy finish. And you'll have seen this before if you see me talk about my seasonal Union Jack patterns. This is the finish that I did for winter and it's a little flag. So um, all I did for this, I had a piece of doweling that's an eighth of an inch maybe. Um, and cut it to a reasonable sort of length, painted it red with just cheap acrylic craft paint, glued a button bead bead on the top and painted that in the same red. You don't have to have dowling rod around. You might have um, a chopstick, an old knitting needle, uh, even an old pen, anything that's sort of round, you know, or I mean, it doesn't even have to be round. Anything that's right sort of length and size just paint it and you can use it for that. This was all hand stitched, so this is a really easy finish. If you're interested in how do you make your hand stitching look neat, don't put paint on the back like me, um, but I will link to the tutorial for this one. I display it standing up in a painted cotton reel. Works pretty well. Um, I do need to glue, blue tack the cotton reel down. It doesn't have quite enough weight. But it's really nice if you're doing a display of smalls and you want something with a bit more height, then this is a really nice way of doing that. Because obviously uh, you can have other things in front of it that won't be hiding this piece, but this can then just give you an extra height to any display that you're doing. So um, obviously it works really well for these Union Jack pieces, 
but I would think you could there are lots of smallish pieces that are sort of flag shaped that you could make a similar finish with this so that's finish number two the flag well this is finish number three this is my foam core finish uh, you've seen this hair before I'm sure it's from the cottage garden samplings year in the woods series I only have stitched this uh, jackrabbit and I as you see only stitched the actual animal itself on the chart there are vines and a little house and all sorts of things around it I just wanted him and I wanted to do something that fitted his shape rather than display him in a rectangle or in a square um, I wanted something to fit his shape so I finished him I traced the outline that I wanted and you'll see I've simplified it a bit I've not taken it in all the nooks and crannies I've simplified it but I've made it reasonably tight to where the stitching is in the places where it kind of fits the end I maybe could have done it a bit more I could have gone in here a bit more could have gone in here a bit more but I traced the shape that I wanted interfaced the back of the stitching with a piece that shape cut out my foam core that shape cut out the fabric the stitched piece with about three quarters of an inch hem all right maybe an inch hem all round and clipped into it uh, in the curves so then I was able to glue that onto the foam core no glue on the front but glue on the back just turning it over with my fingers st stretching it where it needed to fitting it as well as I could around the curves I cut out a piece of felt for the back in fact you'll see my piece of felt wasn't big enough so I had to join two together um, stitch the felt to the stitching piece and then I found this kind of crocheted lace trim and I again just stitched that around I thought that gave a nice neat edge covering the join between the linen and the felt um, on the back again I've not put a hanging uh, thing hook whatever you call those on the back of it but you certainly could it would also hang with the command strip this is super light because it's just the foam core so you could do all sorts of things with this sort of finish again I just sort of have it in a shelf leaning up uh, against the wall but it would be you could make a mobile if you did a number of small hangings um, you could certainly make really great tree decorations using this sort of technique um, all sorts of things that you could do with something that you didn't want to be finished in a standard sort of hoop or square rectangular kind of frame so that's my foam core finish fourth this is my book finish I love this I love this it's not brilliant book binding and if you were very keen you could definitely do better book binding in fact spoiler alert if you're coming to stitch in London I have something that I have done with much better book binding than this and you may be able to learn how to do that just saying so um I stitched even the cover uh, on a piece I knew that was going to be the cover so I stitched it on a piece that would be enough for the front and the back all the inside pieces I didn't really know what I was doing when I started stitching these I just enjoyed stitching a lot of small little animals on different fabrics different scraps leftovers um quite a lot of these are Emma Congdon but not all of them um and then I interfaced those I had a lot of this um, quilting fabric so I backed all of them with the same fabric um, the front and the back have some cardboard in that I just I'm going to say glued but I did also top stitch uh, the front and the back too and again this is definitely just glued in the panel covering the front and the back you could definitely look up better book binding techniques you could also um, do something like Michelle Bendy Stitchy does with an actual journal where you then stick your cross stitch pieces in and journal around them but I really love this idea of a little fabric book and I want to make more of these I might experiment with better book binding um, but a little cross stitch book I love it because it's all those little pieces that I don't necessarily want to display I don't need them all on the wall but I also want occasionally just to be able to look at and go oh those are lovely and to feel like the way that they are finished honours the work that went into them. Um, I think it makes a really lovely thing 
to look through. So you can finish your cross stitch as a little book. And then finally, you could finish your cross stitch as a drum. I mean, a drum is not a non-traditional finish. A drum is pretty traditional. I think this sort of drum, where what I've used here is a Pringles can. I use, you know, the, the small Pringles cans that you can get. But you could definitely do the same with a larger Pringles can. You could do it with any kind of packaging, really. Um, save your packaging. It makes really great cross-stitch finishing uh, things. So I did mine. I stitched it carefully so it came out exactly the right size to go around the Pringles can and then stitch it together. You don't have to do that, um, particularly if you're not doing anything full coverage. You can do a piece and then uh, have a blank bit where the seam is. Uh, you can sew that bit together on a machine if you want or by hand. It's all fine. Um, I glued on my mini pom-pom trim, top and bottom. I did do a little covered uh, fabric uh, thing to go on the base. There's a sort of hollow in the way the Pringles can shaped and I, I didn't want the base showing so I put in this little fox from the uh, some of the lining fabric that I use. Inside, and this is obviously what makes it different from a drum, mine is lined with fabric that is glued very badly on. I'm not very good at gluing, uh, which is only one of the reasons I don't like to use it. And I put a pin cushion in the bottom. Um, so the idea is you could then use this for stitching uh, bits and pieces. As you see, mine has got other bits and pieces in. So I also did a stitch piece for the top. Um, I This is not the lid of the Pringles can. I cut a piece of mount board, maybe even two pieces of mount board, the size that I wanted, stitched the piece, covered it, added, this is foam core, I'm pretty sure, of this middle section, and that's what holds the lid on, is you've got that um, extra thickness that goes into the wedge. Added some pom-pom trim around that. Before I finish gluing all of this down, I put a magnet in here, so now I can have a needle minder that just sits on the top automatically. So it's a pin and needle holder from a Pringles pot. Like I say, I did do my own design for this, but you could easily find a little small that would fit in this sort of size. You could find a piece that's designed for a drum even that makes sure with the fabric that you're using, the gauge of the stitching will fit to the size of your Pringles can. So five forms of finish that are not traditional, but are really fun. I would say this is the most complicated of the finishes. Um, there's a lot of different bits and obviously the measurements need to, to be precise, um, but it is basically just gluing. There's a little bit of gathering um, and stitching, but it's mostly gluing. This one, I did do all of the finishing of this basically on the sewing machine. You could certainly do it by hand. You could do it in a lot of different ways, but a book is a really nice way to display finishes. This is really easy. Honestly, the phone call method, I, I keep wanting to do it again and do an actual tutorial for it, but I need to stitch something that's got the right sort of pattern that will lend itself to this sort of outline shape. Flag could not be easier. Really, really straightforward. And then the wooden circles, it's literally just gluing. So five fun, easy, non-traditional cross stitch finishes, which I'm now going to try and arrange in a way that I can take a photo to show you at the end of this video. So do give me a thumbs up, uh, do like and subscribe, do leave a comment, let me know what you think. What's the most untraditional cross stitch finish that you've done? Is there a finish that you'd like to try? Would you like to try one of these finishes? Or um, would you like to see a tutorial for one of these finishes that I haven't already done? Let me know what you think and I'll see you next time.